as the markets lick their wounds today, investors can take some comfort that Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke is not going to wind down his stimulus plan until he's convinced that the jobs market is back on solid ground. Right call? Wrong call? When will the call be made? With answers, we've got Fed critic right here, Jim Grant, with me of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. He joins me now for an exclusive interview. Good to see you, Jim. Well, Maria, nice to be here. So is it now? I think I know what you're going to say about the call that the Fed has been making in terms of keeping the stimulus in place. Bad call. Correct. Okay. You say it's because of the Fed's policies that we're seeing this long, drawn-out recovery. Explain. All right. Well, um, um, a very smart reader of ours named Matthew Klecker in Chicago said, look, um, uh, positive real interest rates, real interest, interest rates above the rate of inflation are kind of like a, a shot clock in basketball. It's a March Madness theme. You can't just stall in professional basketball and college basketball. You have 24 seconds to shoot or 35 seconds. In any case, it's a clock ticking. And Matthew compares the clicking clock in a basketball game to the function of positive real interest rates. Real interest rates, when they are above the rate of inflation, force people to do something with cash, with liquidity. Um, when interest rates are negligible or below the rate of inflation, people can sit there and do nothing. Notice our federal government. There's no pressure, really, to, to balance the budget, no pressure to wind down these immense deficits because they can be financed at about nothing. And so, too, in the corporate sector, uh, companies that might properly be considered bankruptcy candidates can sustain themselves in their precarious lives through borrowing at, at subsidized rates. And that's what we, we continue seeing. So well, this, yeah, this, 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 this rec so-called recovery has been painfully and very in a very un-American way drawn out, uh, undynamic, and to people who are looking for a job, downright cruel. And the Fed insists that uh, for reasons of, of, of economics as well as humanity, it will continue to do what has not worked. Right. And, and I want to get your take on Cyprus and Europe. But let me put that aside for a moment because, you know, Chairman Bernanke commented on this yesterday. You know, someone said to him, w what about the downside risk of all of this, you know, easy money? And he said, look, there are no issues of inflation. We don't have any issues in terms of, you know, this free money so far. And in fact, it's been helpful to the economy. So what is the downside risk? How does this end? Well, this, this is the, the, the greatest and most perilous experiment in the history of paper money. Every central bank in the world is doing approximately what the Fed is doing. Every central banker in the world, of any consequence, thinks what Chairman Bernanke thinks. They all have the same model, the same outlook, the same conceit about what they can know. The people who run the Fed did not see the most obvious and disastrous um, excesses of credit and residential real estate when they were struck between the eyes with these excesses. Now, Chairman Bernanke seems to sleep well. He's the most, most astonishing degree of serenity on his face, but he insists that he can see into the future and improve it before it happens with these policies. He can't. And by his actions, he has proven that he can't. So, so how does this end? What, do you, what well, are you it, expecting? How does this play out in the coming? Let's say he starts moving on interest rates. I don't know, 2014, a lot of people think he'll start unwinding this at the end of this year. Well, the, these, the, these revolutions, and this is truly a revolution in the thinking about money and monetary policy, they devour their children. Chairman Bernanke is not the most radical voice in the councils of the Fed, nor is he the most radical voice in the councils of world central banking. There are others are coming forward and say, look, let's, let's not stop with the 0% rates. We can go to, to negative nominal rates. We can, we, can, we can target nominal GDP. We can do all these things. This will end in, in immense inflation, in immense destruction of wealth, um, when I certainly don't know, but that is certainly, uh, I think, I think, the outcome. Is the 6.5% unemployment rate the right thing to target? No. I mean, the, 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 Fed, the Fed, I mean, okay, if, if you have a pizza and you just divide it not into 12 pieces but into 36, is anyone going to be happier? I mean, is, will there be more food in the table? What we are led to believe about money is that more money is more better, right? The more they print, the more wealthy we become. But if they were that simple, Maria, there's we would only all one been, pie. We would all have been. But no, there's not. There's the, the pie is at least in the context of American dynamism, the context of enterprise, the pie wonderfully grows. That is the fruit of enterprise. What we are seeing is the suppression of enterprise through the manipulation of markets. It's okay. You asked about my March brackets. Okay, here's my March bracket. Right. In, in, the March finals, bracket. in the finals, it, Mr. Market beats Mr. Bernanke. That's my call. I'm sticking to it. When you say it beats Mr. Bernanke, how does it beat Mr. Bernanke? The market is going to have the last word. 
the Fed is in the business of suppressing prices and manipulating prices. It's mm-hmm. the business of price control. The Fed won't say that, but that truly is what it's about. And I say that markets will have the last word, that prices will finally um, just escape from this prison into which the Fed has thrust them. I, I get it. I get it. So you, you talk peachy, you're talking my language now. Now I, <laughs> now I get it. All right, let, let me ask you about what you wrote in the newsletter this week about the problems this month and the problems in Cyprus cannot be contained, you wrote. So are you anticipating another country uh, to suffer the same fate as Cyprus? How does the Cyprus news develop? In well, the, the importance of the Cyprus news is an idea, and that idea is that to the authorities, your money is is not necessarily yours if it is needed for the good of the state, right? So, um, in, in a pinch, what has been demonstrated in Cyprus is that there will be there will be an event over the weekend. It seems also over the weekend. Um, there will be capital controls. There will be um, uh, this Orwellian and truly chilling phrase: a stability contribution, a contribution, mind you. Um, so I think that idea is now out, and it cannot easily be put back. And people ought to take the measure of this. They ought to take seriously the discussion of our mandarins, our, our, our monetary bureaucrats, about the necessity, seemingly, that they discuss this for capital controls. Uh, they ought to take seriously the fact that, that, uh, uh, that the bureaucrats in, in Brussels cooked up the scheme and imposed it on a Saturday morning. I mean, these are these are these are very chilling facts. Very scary. Yeah. Very scary. What's going on there? I, I guess you know the Europe story. There aren't any solutions yet. I mean, we keep hoping for something to yeah. break in Europe, and it's still a very very tough situation. So, if I don't want to take the direction of the Federal Reserve and put my money into stocks and risk assets, what do I do? Oh, I mean, I think there are risk assets and risk assets everywhere you look. You know, in any market, there is likely to be something mispriced, right? There, there, there are, even in this market, which has doubled and more than doubled, there are occasional opportunities. I think the thing to do as an investor um, is, to, is to search for compelling absolute value. It's not so easy to find. Certainly in the bond market, I think it's altogether absent. Um, I think the gold mining shares, which are almost universally despised, represent a call on the surviving monetary asset. That is one area of absolute uh, compelling value. Um, D- does copper and the way copper has been trading tell you anything? I mean, I've been looking at copper really deteriorate, and then you see what happened with FedEx, yeah. you know, a transport Well, John, John Mendelson, a wonderful thinker on Wall Street, has he was the one who coined the, the phrase, Dr. Copper. The metal with a PhD in economics, and it was, I haven't talked to him in the past 30 years or so about this, but his contention, which makes great sense, is the copper, in as much as it is a, is a basic industrial metal, is an important, its price is an important indicator of the trend in, in real business activity. That's, it seems to me that what's happening in China with respect to the buildup of, of, invent, of inventories and base metals, including copper, is a, is a telltale sign of, of, uh, of, of consequences, among other things, of the suppression of prices and the manipulation of credit, which in China are carried to a Streams. And if you look at the chart of copper, you only have to be led to believe that business is deteriorating, it's getting worse, and of course that leads me to the fact that the Fed is just going to continue to be there. Yeah. It all comes back to the Fed. It does until it doesn't. The people rebel against the Fed. They rebelled against the Fed in the late 70s, don't forget. G. William Miller, then chairman of the Federal Reserve, had this idea that if he only printed more dollars, things would become better. Uh, they didn't. Uh, then uh, the markets rebelled, and interest rates went up and up and up, and then came Paul Volcker with a most draconian um, policy to uh, put things right with terrific attendant human suffering. It seems to me something like that will happen now. I mean, markets are in thrall to these central bankers. It's astonishing that after so many years of demonstrated human error on the part of these mandarins, that people still seemingly trust them. Right. I mean, but they do, for now. Uh, they won't always. Well, we'll be watching that. You, you, you hope it doesn't end as badly, but certainly we've got history uh, on that on that side. Jim, good to have you on the program. Thank you, Bria. Nice as to be always. Here. Thank you for your brackets, okay. and your analogy <laughs> to March Madness. Jim Grant joining us.